save time. I, I think it was Joshua that said to the Israelites, as for me and my house, who shall we serve? I didn't hear you. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm glad to see all of you this morning. Um, well, maybe the convention hangover, but uh, we will continue to follow until we have seen the greater things. Let's rise on our feet. We are going to take our convention theme song. We're pressing up. We're pressing on to the onward way, the upward way. And we shall continue to gain new heights every day. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land. That song is not just for the convention. It should continue to be the prayer of our heart until we have apprehended Christ. So shall it be possible for you in Jesus' name. I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on. The upward way, new eyes and in every day. Thank you. 
our Father and our God, since we know that this eye is unattainable until we journey with you, we are therefore praying for new grace and new strength to move up. Even I am this morning in your word and in the knowledge of your ways in the name of Jesus. Father, let us not be hearers of your word alone. But the grace, Lord, not to speak or mouth your word alone, but to follow on until indeed we have found our feet placed on a higher ground. Help us, Father, that as we hear your words again today, it will take us higher still in the name of Jesus. And cause that my mouth will be like that of a ready writer. And you will cause me to speak a word in season this morning. All to the glory and to the honor of your holy name. Jesus' mighty name, we are afraid. Amen. It's a privilege to be able to share some of the thoughts that the Lord has placed on my heart, which, for which there was no sufficient time to share during the convention. Uh, somebody said, and most people do say it when they are giving their inaugural lectures. Uh, they would declare that if today I can declare great things that I have found in the area of my research, it is because I have stood on the shoulders of giants. There is no man who can see greater than where he's standing, except you use the telescope. All right? Telescope will only bring those things closer to you, but it's not because you are there. And the only way by which we can achieve and get to this higher plane is to theme up with the Lord Jesus Christ. The topic of my discussion this morning is the key to higher ground. The key to higher ground. Now, one of the common things that we have seen during the convention is that a number of those who encounter Christ came back to invite others. And they told them, come and see. Come and see. And uh, it, it, it was uh, something of uh, great joy that when those that they invited finally came, they also came to their own conclusion that there is something peculiar about the Lord Jesus Christ. And as the Lord will be giving you the keys this morning, may you not lose them in Jesus' name. Now, what's a key? A key is a simple instrument that enables you gain access to a place that has hitherto been locked up. Now, if you are going to use your strength to force the door open, it may take quite a long time, and it will require a lot of arsenals it will require a lot of manipulations. But simply, if you have the key to a door, you just slot the key in and you turn it. It doesn't take much effort and you can gain access into that place where whatever you are looking for is stored. In the same manner, Jesus is the key to this great things or greater things that you and I are seeking for. <clears throat> Once we find Jesus, this access becomes much easier. I'd like to read some scriptures that will set the foundation for our discussion this morning. First and foremost, let's look at our, G at our theme passage. John chapter 1, I'd like to take it from verse 46. John chapter 1, from verse 46. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? So they were discussing something that is good. Philip had invited Nathanael, and Nathanael came up with this statement. But Philip said something to him, come 
and see. In, in, inquisitiveness or thirst is one of the keys that can lead you to Christ. If you are not thirsty, if you are not inquisitive, nobody can do science without being inquisitive. Because in science, you query every theory. Not theory, you query every, what do we call it? The, uh, 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 proposal. What's that word? Hypothesis. Thank you. You will query what has been put forward. And that was what Nathaniel was doing here. He was querying the hypothesis that Philip brought to him. You have found him. Who is the Messiah? How can you be sure? Can any good thing? But I thank God for Philip. He said, well, the taste of the pudding is in the eating. So you come and see. Let's read on. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming. We may be few, not too many here this morning, but he can perceive the thirst. He can perceive those who desire, you know, to see something greater today. He can perceive what your heart desire as you come to church, as you come to God this morning is. He saw him afar off. And Jesus said, to Nathanael, behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no God. Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. 50. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than this. And he said unto him, Verily, verily I say unto you, and we are told in another translation that is everyone, hereafter all of you shall see heaven open. Say amen. At our prayer meeting this morning, our brother was enunciating that if you have encountered Christ, if the Spirit of God has alighted upon you, your heaven is already open. And that's a revelation. You are not seeking an open heaven. The moment you are with Jesus, you notice in this verse, it says, you shall see heaven open. And angels of God are sending and descending upon the Son of Man. Wherever Jesus is standing, that is where the heaven is open. My prayer this morning is that you will team up with Jesus to that location where there is open heaven. I was discussing with a friend of mine. He said, well, in those days when the Spirit just comes and lifts, they may be looking for open heaven. But the Jesus we are talking about lives in our hearts. So perpetually on a daily basis, you are under an open heaven. And may that open heaven cause mysteries to come to you this morning in Jesus' name. Now, second passage, Mark chapter 2. All these passages have, you know, keys that we are looking for to the greater things that we want to see. Mark chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. Mark 3, 14 and 15. And he goeth up into a mountain. Open heaven, like we are saying, it's not just for people who want to remain in the status quo. Now, Jesus here went to the open heaven. I mean, went to, to a higher place. Verse 13. He goeth up into a mountain. And call it unto him, he would, and they came to him. Notice that it is not enough for you to have come to church, which is the, 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 
the, the, the, the, the, the pillar, the ground and the pillar of truth. The church of the living God. The ground and the pillar of truth. It is not enough for you to come here. He invited you, and some of us know that Sunday, Sunday is a time to come before the Lord. But that's not enough. You must be willing to climb with Jesus. He left multitude at the feet of the mountain, but he called those whom he would. And of all that he called, only twelve climbed up to the mountain with him. And it is to these twelve that the next statement pertains. The Bible says, and he ordained twelve that they should be with him. That's another key. To be with him. I was looking at last year's convention and uh, I recall that the theme is abiding in Christ. So when we started to say that you will see greater things, we are not jumping. If you have not followed up on the teaching of last year to find your place to dwell permanently in Christ the, 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 the greater things that we are talking about will still look like a fallen hope it will look like something that is far fetched it will look like something that is unattainable but look at it the plan was that these twelve will be with him and that he might send them forth to preach. A message from Christ will first rub on them. So their testimony from then will not be what their life used to be. It will be what they have learned in Christ. And I thank God for all those who invited others. They were saying, we have found the Messiah. They are, we have found him whom Moses and the prophet spoke about, Jesus of Nazareth. So, abiding in Christ, being with him, is one incontrovertible key that will make you to see greater things on a daily basis. We are going somewhere this morning. Please follow me. Let's go to... John chapter 15, verse 14 to 15. I'm just, I mean, 4 to 5. John 15, 4 to 5. I'm just laying this foundation. When I begin to tease it out and unpack, then you will see how they connect. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit, no matter how much you try, no matter how much you struggle, the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. But if it abides in the vine, it will bring forth fruit. He says, neither, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless, I think you should underline that, unless you abide. If we had followed up what we learned last year, by now, Without even knowing it, every one of us will have greater testimony. Because our fruit will not only have come, they will be abiding. And we're talking about physical and spiritual fruits. Because those who follow Christ, they have testimony of his changing power. First upon their life and in everything that they touch. So, verse 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me. And that's talking about the first willingness that we saw. He called those whom we will. And they came. Those who came are those who are willing to abide in him. The same bear much fruit. For, again, emphasizing the last verse. For without me... You can do nothing. All other efforts is in futility. It becomes a sinking sand. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Finally, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And I know that that was our theme for the convention before abiding in Christ. 
So you see there has been a pattern for the past three years or so. Right? Now don't... Um, 2 Corinthians 3.18 is talking about going from one level of glory to another. But we all... This, this means that it is not the intention of Christ to exclude anybody. But it is as you are willing. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed to the same image. Look at that. That was what happened to each of the people who came to him. The moment they came, they saw something different from where they were coming from. They become transformed to the same image. And it doesn't stop there. They begin to move from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. Praise to the Lord. Now, let me go back to when Philip, um, no, Andrew, the first person we saw out of the two people that John pointed Jesus to, the first person that did something was Andrew. Andrew brought, G, brought Peter, who was his brother, to Christ. And when he did that, that was a statement Jesus made. He said, you are Peter. Let's go to that John chapter 1 again. Give me um, verse 42. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, you are Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is called, or by interpretation, a stone. The moment you come to Jesus, like I said in my opening message the other day, he knows where he is taking you. Incidentally, this stone that Jesus talked about, Peter wrote about it. Give me First Peter chapter 2. Um, because of time, um, I want to take it from verse 1. First Peter chapter 2. But I'm going to verse 6. Look at this. This could be likened to where we were before we met Christ. And then, as we stay with him, he's going to end up turning us into a stone, just like Peter. Let's read together. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. Yes? As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the world, it's a journey that you may grow thereby. You come to Christ, you continue to grow. Next verse, verse 4. Indeed, as you have tasted that the Lord is good. When they say, come and see, you will taste him and you will see that he's good. This is where the story begins. Coming to him as a living stone. So Jesus himself is the living stone. And every other stone that comes to him gets ignited. Rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. Go on. You also, as lively stone. This was the intention of Christ when he says, come to me. You know, he told Peter, he said, you used to be the son of uh, Jonas. But I'm going to turn you into a stone. A stone that will make contact with the living stone. And it will now become a living stone himself. So if you tell me, oh, I'm abiding in Christ. I want to see your liveliness. I want to see Christ reflecting in that stone. Look at this stone. The Bible says, as lively stone, we are being built up a spiritual house, not a physical one. So, whether you see it or not, Christ is building a spiritual house. It is not physical. But if you are part of the building blocks, you will know. Because once you come to him, what he says to one, he says to all. What he has said to Peter is what he's saying to you. You used to be this, but this is what you become, a living stone. 
So coming to Christ is that catalyst that unleashes what he wants you to become. Something greater than you have ever been. You need to become something greater. But if you don't come, he said, without me, you can do nothing. You can go to the mountain and fast if you like. Let it not be seven days. Let it be 40 days. Like Jesus fasted. Nothing will happen. Because without him, you can do what? Nothing. But if you come to him indeed, you come to a living stone, you become transformed, and you become a spiritual how? A holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Every day and everything you do becomes a sacrifice which is well pleasing to God. Little wonder, twice in Jesus' ministry, the Father answered in heaven, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. There are some of the things that we do that are just in the acceptable will of God. There are some things we do, they are just good. But God wants you and I, especially after this convention, to move up to the place where we can call the perfect will of God. He said to Jesus, my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased, listen to him. So if you ask me, we don't have any other person to go to. In our Bible study this morning, our leader was telling us about what Creflo Dollar had said before and uh, how he, you know, you know, having encountered Christ in another way. You remember I told you a story. When you come to an elephant, you see different parts of it. Because we are all blind. And we are blindsided in a way. But the aspect of Christ that you discover is the description you will be able to bring out. You must strive to move to higher ground. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. So, I, I actually want to read verse 6 as well. Therefore, as it is contained in Zion, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. That's something great. How many of you like to be put to shame? How many of you like to put your hand in something that will not succeed? But when we come to Christ, not only does it turn us into a living stone, the Bible says you will not be put to shame. I think you should write that down. That as I'm going forward from this convention, in no way and in nothing will I be put to shame. That's the promise of God that you need to stand upon. If you come to him, you have come to a cornerstone that is a chief. His elect is precious. And he who believes in him will not be put to shame. Praise the Lord. Now, another issue that I want to tackle before I take you to show you what will happen, four things that will happen to you when you are abiding in him. Let's see the issue of prejudice. What is prejudice? When you hold to an opinion strongly, but that opinion cannot be verified. We all have prejudices. Ah, Parents here, some of us may say, I don't want my daughter or my son to marry an Igbo man. On what basis? Some of you will say, ah, we are all yo, we don't want to give our children to an Igbo man. Prejudice. Oh, ah. And so many of them, look at Nathaniel. Nathaniel said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? That was prejudice. prejudice. And had it not been that Jesus had mercy on him, he would have lost out. Oh. You know, there was a king that said he was with Jehoshaphat. I think it was the son of Ahab, Jehoram. They said, look, you want us to go and fight this battle? Why don't you call the priest that will tell us whether to go or not? Jehoram said, no, no, no. After all, 70 prophets have said, look, go, you will prosper. And Jehoshaphat asked him, is there no other prophet we can ask? He said, there is one man, but 
he doesn't really talk good anytime. Anytime you call him, he will tell you it's not good. Prejudice. Because the man was speaking the truth. Nathaniel had never met Jesus, but yet he concluded nothing good. What he was holding to is what we call lying vanities. Turn with me to Jonah chapter 2 verse 8. And why am I saying this? Because if we don't take care of our prejudices. Oh, if Baba Deboye speaks, everything must come to pass. But if any other person less than him says anything, it's probably not going to come to pass. God can use even little children to minister. Because it is his spirit speaking. And Nathaniel will have missed his visitation. Look at this. He said, those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. Please, can you give it to me in Amplify and then get NIV ready? Amplify. He said, those who pay regard to false, useless, and worthless idols. You know, there are so many things we also hold on to that we think will bring us to greatness. Some people bank with microfinance. Some people do multi-level marketing. We all do all sorts of things. But I want to tell you there is only one rock that is solid, and that is Christ. If you don't confirm anything with Christ and you go into it, it's at your own risk. They that observe lying vanities. Those who pay regard to false, useless idols. Nathaniel held strongly that as far as Nazareth is concerned, nothing good can come out. And I'm going somewhere with this information. They forsake their own mercy. Source of mercy. If you heard everything you heard at the convention and you brush it aside and you have put it in your note and you covered it up and you are looking for new revelation, you are forsaking your own mercy. You need to sit down and study. What is the Lord particularly saying to me? Indeed, the last instruction he gave you and I, have I obeyed? Give it to me in NIV. And of course, if you have common English Bible. He said, those who cling to worthless idol forfeit the grace that could be theirs. There is a grace that is waiting for you in Christ. Imagine what would have happened if Nathaniel didn't eventually follow Philip to come. How will he be able to say, thou art the son of God. Thou art the king of Israel. He had a personal experience. And this thing we are talking about, your pastor cannot do it for you. Every one of us must make up our mind to come and encounter Christ. Praise the Lord. I'm sure many of you are looking for me to preach greater things. I'm coming there. Now, give me the last one. If you have, come on English Bible. Do you have? All right. Praise the Lord. All these are all saying the same thing. Don't hold on to your prejudices. That's a prejudice. As new lights come into your heart, you must respond to it. 2 Corinthians 3, 18 says, As we behold him as in a mirror, we are changed. So, I'm going to be demanding of every one of us, change that is commensurate with the Christ that we have seen. And if I don't see change, all that is telling me is that you haven't been to him. Because if you have been to him, something will happen. Praise the Lord. I know Brother Ogunina is the only one that is here this morning. Amen. In Luke chapter 15, we saw the prodigal son who held on to the belief that, look, what is my father doing that I can't do? And he's managing farms. He's managing. Okay, let's try it out. Give me my own portion. Let me go and also do the same thing. Did he succeed? No, because apart from the father... You can do nothing. He forsake the grace that could have been his and he went to pursue shadow. He thought everything could be answered by money. Oh, I can also command. 
I can also hire. I can also buy what I like. He forgot that the grace on the father was what was multiplying the asset. In a short while, he learned his lesson and came back. Thank God for unfailing mercies. Of course, you know, the father received him and he became a greater man. Now, it wasn't only the prodigal son. We saw Peter. This Peter that Jesus said, you will be a stone. A living stone. Upon which I will rally some other people to also join you. When Jesus, in the house of uh, Simon the Tanner, showed him a large sheet. And he saw all kinds of four-footed beasts. And God said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. What did Peter say? He said, I have never eaten anything unclean. And three times that thing appeared. Peter still remained Adaman. Of course, we know today that Jesus was trying to introduce Peter to the Gentile. But Peter said, no. I don't eat anything unclean. You see, when you follow Christ, new instructions will come on a daily basis. You must leave your prejudice. You must leave what you have held on tightly to. Are you listening to what Christ is saying on you? Of course, Paul was given that invitation. He accepted it, and he became an apostle to the Gentile. Those that observe lying vanity forsake the grace that could have been there. Even Paul missed it. You remember the story of after the first missionary journey, they wanted to go back. The first missionary journey, uh, John Mark went with them, who was a cousin of Barnabas. So when they got to a point, John Mark went back and didn't continue to follow them. So on their second missionary journey, Barnabas suggested that they should take John Mark with them. Paul said, lie, lie. This one, this deserter, I'm not going to have anything to do with him. But Barnabas took John and discipled him. Look at all the books that Mark wrote in the gospel. Praise the Lord. Don't, you know what? Paul later, when he was on the way to Jerusalem, he asked Mark to bring him some things that Mark is profitable to him in the ministry. I don't want to go into that detail. So every one of us may have one or two prejudices we need to drop. If Christ is telling you to drop your rigid way of doing things, please listen to him. And the Lord will help us all in Jesus' name. Now, of course, the rich wrong, the rich, uh -huh. these are, uh, help me now, the rich young ruler also missed it. This was a man that was keeping all the law. He has held on to that. But well, so long as I keep the law, all these monies that come to me, I can enjoy them. Jesus knew that he held on to that prejudice. Jesus said, go and sell everything you have. Give it to the poor and come and follow me. What did the man do? The man went away sorrowfully. I don't know what thing Christ touched during last week convention. But you parried it. And you continued in that way. You are forsaking the mercy that could be yours. But for those who have heeded the invitation and they have accepted what Christ is telling them, I discover that a lot is promised to them. Can you go with me to Psalm 91? Quickly. We're talking about the benefits of abiding. The benefits of an abiding life. And you will tell me if all these things that are mentioned are not great, then you will now tell me what things are great. He said, he that dwelleth all of them were said, were told, come and see. And they stayed with Christ. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You cannot be under the shadow of the Almighty and kidnappers will come and take you. They are not yet born. 
there are so many advantages of staying under the shadow of the Almighty. And it comes only if you abide in him, as he has promised you. Verse 2, I know we know this uh, uh, scripture very well, but for how many of us are reaping the benefits of what is written here? This man said, David, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. In other words, for Jesus to be your refuge, you must also be in him. My fortress, Amuremi, my God, in him I will trust. I'm not going to hold on to any lying vanities. I'm going to hold on to this Christ. Verse 3. Says, Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. Whatever snare had been laid for our feet before the convention, it is finished. Amen. I know uh, it's a bit cold, but please, I'm just begging you, listen to this. He says, surely he shall deliver thee. Surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Hey, honey, uh, uh, kese kese lari, kasa kasa mbo, kasa kasa nikinyo, baba kese kese. But this is a promise that holds good for those of us who we choose to abide in him. Surely, he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Think about that. When you have the truth of Christ, it's your shield. And it's your buckler. It will hold you strong. You won't be weak. You won't be overcome by sicknesses. You won't be overcome by resurging corona. Praise the Lord. Verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid. Fear. Fear is one of the things that will be rampant even as we go towards election. And as the end time is appearing nearer. I shared with us, you know, the, the, the causes of stress in our present day. Fear, uncertainty about tomorrow. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day. Go on, please. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A jackalian. Destruction that wastes life that cuts people short in their prime, it will not be your portion because you are abiding in Christ. A thousand shall fall at your side and then 10,000 at your right hand. That's 11,000 will first fall before it will come near you. Isn't that great? Isn't that awesome? Isn't that stupendous? Isn't that Unbelievable. But that's the promise for those who are abiding. But it shall not. That's a promise that is as good as Central Bank, whatever they store there. Even Nineck is running away from Central Bank. Because it seems that the head of Central Bank is not where it ought to be. Praise the Lord. Verse 8. Only with your eyes. When he oju uh uh to tiro kun tio sa to ba rosa koni shekini koni sa once you have seen Christ with your eyes, nothing will make you afraid again. Only with your eyes you shall behold and see the reward of the wicked. Now let's let's zero in. Verse 9. Look at this. Because thou hast met the Lord, which is my refuge. Now, this is a comparative writing. David was saying, you also, you have met the Lord, which is my own refuge. Even the most high, your habitation. So, I don't believe there is any other place we ought to dwell. It is in Christ. But once we do this, verse 10. 
there shall no evil befall you. No evil will befall me. Neither shall any play come near my dwelling. For he will give his angel. Can you now see the angels that are descending and ascending? He will give his angel charge over you to keep you in all your ways. When powerful people are going somewhere, they will have convoy in the front, convoy at the back, they will stay at the middle. But even the most powerful, the president of the United States of America, when they want to kill Kennedy, they still killed him. But when he gives his angel charge over you, who is that? Who is able to affect you? Pastor Adio was sharing with us some few weeks ago, Psalm 27, of what David said. He said, one thing have I desired, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord, the changing glory that I'm seeing. I want to stay there. You say, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in the secret of his pavilion. These promises are for us, but only if we abide. In our class again this morning, we are talking about the different glories of the world. I mean, the different glories that are in God. The things that bring glory. And we are comparing it with what is in the world today. The only way to escape the hardship, the turmoil, the heartbreak that's in the world today is to hide in this rock. Praise the Lord. Now, take me back. Take me back. I, I've not finished with that Psalm 90. He said, thou shalt tread upon the lion and the hadar. Lion is the most powerful animal on earth. But for you to tread on it, that animal can be as high as uh, four, five feet, depending on how big. Mostly four feet, but it's about seven feet long. But the scriptures say you would tread on it, literally. And the other, there was a day we saw snakes somewhere. You come and see me and Joshua. We are trying climbing something to just a small snake. Eventually, we both killed it. She, he, he hit the largest stroke that kills it. But what am I saying? If any, even a, a lizard comes here now, most people will scatter and run out. But if you abide in Christ, you will tread upon the, either the physical lion or spiritual lion of this world. The principalities and power. You know where the Bible says they are? Underneath our feet. What tremendous power we lose when we don't abide. I'm talking about the blessings in abiding. And abiding is one of the greatest key that unlocks greater things. Praise the Lord. Verse 14. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. The Lord will deliver me. He will set me on high. Because I have known his name. Verse 15. He will, I will call upon the Lord, he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble, he will deliver me and honor me. And I know he will do the same for you if you choose to abide. With long life, he will satisfy you. So if he is intending to satisfy with you with long life, it's not an ordinary malaria that will kill you. It is not typhoid that will kill you. It is not corona that will kill you. It is not cancer that will kill you. In fact, those things will not be able to stay in your body because you are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. These are the privileges that we have in Christ when we abide. Praise you the Lord. Let me give you four more points and I go. Number one, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, we have read it. As you behold as in the mirror, you are changed. You are going to be changing as per each time you are able to gain something new in Christ. Give me 2 Corinthians 3.18. 2 Corinthians 3.18. That's number one. I want to just show you quickly and I will round up. But we all, beholding us in the glass, the glory of the Lord are changed. That's number one thing. You, you experience constant change to become better. 
So the same image, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And that's how, what our brother was saying this morning. When you abide under this shadow, there is a, there is a constant inflow. His angels are in charge over you. They bring you all that you need. And you discover that you become unexplainable. You become an enigma. It's Christ. Number two, John 8, verse 31. John 8, 31. He said, if you continue... In my word, Jesus said to those Jews, we believe on him. Jesus said to brethren in heritage of God's church, who believe in his word. He said, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. All that people have been saying is disciple, disciple, disciple. But that's not the end of it all. That is a progression from discipleship. But to become a disciple, you have to continue in Christ. How do you continue in Christ? You are communing with him, as we saw in that 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But what I want to pick out from here is that the starting place is that you are disciples indeed. Disciples indeed are not truants. I'm not talking about coming to church every day. Whether you are in church or you are not in church, you are constantly with Christ. I have a friend in America. He doesn't go to church. Because he has a working relationship with Christ. That when you contact him, you know that this man has contacted Christ. If you spend five minutes with him, how did he get that? He will spend long time staying with Christ for himself. Then he will bring his family near. They will spend time. And he does that consistently. Without knowing it, his face is shining. And the glory of Christ is reflecting in him. So for you too, if you continue in his word, you become not a truant, a disciple indeed. Number two. I mean, that's number three now. Let me take you to the graduation. Let's see John chapter 15, verse 15. There is a graduation that is higher than discipleship. 15, 15. Henceforth, I call you not servant. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. You see, you grow from being a disciple to becoming a friend of Christ. And that's growth. You share things that are very intimate with you, with your friends. Not a servant. As disciple, you are only understanding. And he tells you to do this, you do it. He gives you commendation. Well done. And when you serve him well, he gives you gifts. But you see, you will graduate from disciple to become his friend, friend of Jesus. Martha, Mary, and John were not disciples as it were. They weren't following Jesus, but they were his friend. And when they told him, your friend whom you love is sick, what did he say? This sickness is not unto death. Because he knows the plan that he has for Lazarus. Friend. There is no religiosity between friends. You don't hide from your friend. So you graduate from being a disciple to become a friend of Christ. It's like you and Christ, you are always talking. Maybe if you put your Bluetooth, you are talking to him, and people don't know who you are talking to, but you are talking to Christ. But that's not where it ends. Let me take you further. Let's go to Hebrews 11, I mean Hebrews chapter 2, from verse 11 to 13. It takes you to the last, highest level. Brethren, brotherhood. Now, but he that sanctified and they that are sanctified are all of one. 
for which cause he's not ashamed to call them brothers. In other words, he elevates you from a friendship and you become his brother. What the father is giving belongs to Jesus and yourself. He's saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church, I will sing praises unto him. Give me Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. Isaiah 8. He said, Behold, I and the children whom God, Lord, had given me are for what? Signs and wonders in Israel. From the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. What you will notice in your life as brethren is the fact that miracles, signs begins to come out from your life. It was said in those days, I think it's in Acts Act of Apostles chapter 16, aprons and handkerchief will be taken from Paul and it will cast out demons. Shadows of Peter was healing people. Why? They had become Jesus' brethren. As I close, I want to close with Isaiah chapter 40. We can start from here, at least. From verse 28. Isaiah 40, from verse 28. It says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faint not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. Verse 29. He gave power to the faint. And to them that have no might, what's your state this morning? Are you fainting already? Do you have enough strength to go on to that mountain to stay with him? Don't worry. This morning is another day of grace. Amen? Verse 30. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Verse 31. That's where we are going. But they that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. Not they that visit the presence of the Lord. They that wait on him shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run. And this is where your labor becomes recognized. It does not mean that, oh, you sit down doing nothing. But when he says run and you run, what, 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 what will happen? You will not be weary. And when he says walk and you walk, you won't be fainting. May the Lord make this state of permanently waiting on him, your state and my state, in Jesus' name. I said may this state become our state together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's rise on our feet. I want us to take this song, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as the eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not fail teach me Lord teach me Lord to wait you may not know that song, but it's not important. This is where I'm going this morning. How many of us have decided to forsake our lying vanities? How many of us have decided that we want to shift to the mountain with Christ? How many of us are ready to run and not be weary? How many of us are ready to walk with Christ and not fail? If you are that person, please say, here I am, O oh Lord. I am ready to wait on you. I am ready to really abide. If I had abided since last year's convention, I would have seen this greater thing. All the things that Psalm 91 mentioned, they are for you. They are not for angels. When are you going to come to Christ? When are you going to mount up with wings as eagle? When are you going to run and not be weary? When are, not going to, are you going to walk and not fail? If you also decide to come today, it will help you. It will help you. 
you don't want to worship from afar anymore but you want to come even on this sunday following the convention he's still ready to accept you you want to leave your prejudices ah sunday nicola Amanwa. no you want to stay with him even if you are you are in your house you are in your shop you are in your business you are you are you are in your where you are teaching where you are laboring jesus will make you to walk and you will not faint he will make you to run and you will not be weary Draw me near, near, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me near, near. Discover that place, so oh. we must discover it. Oh, I am done. I am done. No. that are contending with all staying in the presence of Christ. But will you cry to him this morning and say, Lord, draw me nearer in the midst of all the busyness, in the midst of all the conflicts, in the midst of all the lying vanities. Please, Lord, have mercy on me. Don't let me go astray like the prodigal son. Don't let me miss it like Peter missed it. Lord, help me to be willing to hear instructions on a daily basis from you please lord draw me nearer let this convention not be a waste let it not be a waste in my life open my eyes oh god to see you on a daily basis to walk a new path with you to walk a new direction with you to hear what you are saying to me to move from being disciples to becoming even brothers with you lord lord help me this morning help me this morning help me this morning please draw me nearer please draw me nearer are you weary this morning why don't you say lord renew my strength it's because my strength has been dissipated on other things but this morning i need you to renew my strength lord don't let your presence be a burning to me don't let your presence become a, 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 a burden to me. Please, can we talk to God? I can't hear you pray. This is not the prayer of a man that is in his presence. Can you cry to him this morning? He's still available to help us. So that we will not say the, 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 the harvest is past, the rain is gone, but we are not saved. Draw me near, our Father. I know, Lord God, in some area, my life needs to be dusted. But please, this morning, let the grace that is here draw me nearer. The grace to see greater things, to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The grace, Lord, for angels to be ministering day and night to me. Lord, draw me to that place. Draw me to that place. Draw me to that place. Thank you, Jesus. We take it, the chorus one more time and I'll pray. 
as we are told in the first day of the conference we are not here to justify ourselves we are not here Lord God to give excuses why we have been going up and down we have been busy here up and down we are just saying Lord this morning just like you drew these disciples nearer please Lord have mercy draw us nearer this morning in the name of Jesus as we are walking on the way, let a scripture begin to burn in our heart. As we are seated with you in our quiet place, oh God, reveal yourself to us. As we walk in the way, oh God, let an understanding of the situation we have been in, let it become clearer to us in the name of Jesus. We are praying, Lord, like you change the life of Jacob, you will change our life. Like you change, Lord God, the, 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 the ideas of, of, of Nathaniel. Change our life's idea and focus in the name of Jesus. We're asking, Lord, that you will refocus us to those things that you have prepared for them that love you. The scripture says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what you have prepared for them that love you. We saw it in that Psalm 91. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will be with him in trouble. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Father, we pray, let your love well up in our heart more than ever before in the name of Jesus. In the areas we have gone cold, oh Lord, rejuvenate our hearts. Rekindle our zeal. In whichever way we are tired and we are weary, this morning, renew our strength. Help us to go with you further. Help us to go with you further. Help us to go with you to the mountain. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. And may our life not remain the same. Faithful is he, is he who has called us. Who will also do it. Thank you, precious Father. We give you all the praise and glory. Lord, the lessons of this year's convention will not be lost on us. Three years ago, we were talking about beholding us in a mirror. Last year, we were talking about abiding in him. And this year, we are talking about seeing greater things. The import of all these messages, may they never be lost upon our life in the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. The Lord bless you.